Hamblin hillbilly. Me. I bowed right pretty to the judges and the rest, and I took a silver dollar from a hole inside my vest and plunked it on the table and said, there's my calling card, and anybody whips me, well, he's got to fill hard. Old Dan Whelan was a laughing fit to holler, and little Jimmy was just, there's one dead dollar. And big Tom Sargent had a yeller, toothy grin. But I tucked my little whippoorwill spang underneath my chin and petted it, tuned it, till the judges said, begin. Well, Big Tom Sargent was the first in line. He could fiddle all the bugs off a sweet potato vine. He could fiddle down a possum from a mile high tree. He could fiddle up a whale from the bottom of the sea. And you could hear him spanking till they spanked each other raw. When he finished, variations on turkey in the straw. <laughs> a little Jimmy Weezer was the next to play. He could fiddle all night. He could fiddle all day. He could fiddle up chills. He could fiddle up fever. He could make a fiddle rustle like a lowland river. He could make a fiddle croon like a loving woman. And they clapped like thunder when he finished drumming. Well, next came the ruck of the bobtail fiddlers, the let's go easies, the fair to middlers. They got their claps. They lost their bicker. They settled down for some more corn liquor. The crowd was getting tired of their no count squealing. Went out. In the center, steps old Dan Wheel. He fiddled high. He fiddled low. Listen, a little whipper, well, you better spread your wings. He fiddled with a cherry wood bow. Old Dan wheelin has got bee honey in his strings. He fiddled the wind by the lonesome moon. He fiddled the most almighty tune. He started fiddling like a ghost, and he ended fiddling like a host. He fiddled north. He fiddled south. He fiddled the heart right out of your mouth. He fiddled here. He fiddled there. He fiddled salvation everywhere. And when he finished, the crowd cut loose. <sighs> Whippoorwill, there's rain on your breast. And I, I sat there figuring, what's the use? Whippoorwill, fly home to your nest. But I stood up, hurt, took my bowl. My fiddle went to my shoulder, so. And there was no crowd to get me phased, but I was alone where I was raised, up in the mountains, so still it makes you scared where God lies sleeping in his big white beard. And I heard the sound of the squirrels in the pine, and I, I heard the earth breathing through the long nighttime. Well, they fiddled the rose, and they fiddled the thorn, but they hadn't fiddled the mountain. And they fiddled sinful, and they fiddled moral, but they hadn't fiddled the brush with laurel. And they fiddled loud, and they fiddled still, but they hadn't fiddled the whippoorwill. I started off with a dump deedle dump, oh hell, broke loose in Georgia. Skunk cabbage growing by the big stump, whippoorwill, you're singing now. Oh, Georgia booze, it's a mighty fine booze, it's the best that they ever poured ya, but it eats our souls right off of your shoes in Hillsborough, loose in Georgia. My mama was a whippoorwill pert, and my daddy, he was lazy, but I'm hell broke loose in a new store shirt just to fiddle all Georgia crazy. And swing your partner up and down the middle and sashay now, listen to the fiddle, flapjacks flipping on a red hot griddle, and hell's broke loose, hell's broke loose. Fire on the mountain, snakes in the grass, Satan's here a violin, oh lordy, let him pass. Go down, Moses, set my people free. Pop goes the weasel through the old oak tree, and Jonah sitting on a hickory bow, and up jumps a whale, and where's your prophet now? And rabbit in a peat patch, possum in a pot, Try and stop my fiddle now, my fiddle's getting hot. Whippoorwill, shout it from the burning bush. Whippoorwill, sing it through the mountain hush. Whippoorwill, crying at the stable door. Sing tonight like you never sung before. Hells broke loose like a stomping mountain show. Sing it till you bust the gold in your throat. Hells broke loose for 40 miles around. They're bound to stop your singing if you don't sing it down. Sing it from the mountains, Whippoorwill, and sing it from the valleys and slap them with a the hill. Cause I'm strutting high as an eagle's quill and hell's broke loose. Hell's broke loose. Hell broke loose in Georgia. But there wasn't a sound when I finished bowing. With 
for Will. You can sing no more. Somewhere or other, the, the dawn was growing. Oh, that was the will. And I thought, <laughs> I fiddled all night and lost. You're a good hillbilly, but you've been bossed. So I turned to congratulate old man Dan. But he put his fiddle in my hand. And then the noise of the crowd began. When I see the aspirations and the honor of being here from David and the rest of the organizing crew, uh, Jay as well, and many of the other executives, I see a wow factor, uh, the wow factor of a community organization, a, a group that has interest in, in launching a radio station for this community, one that's going to be the voice, a voice of Aaron. It brings back memories uh, almost nine years ago in 1994-95 where a similar vision uh, was mine uh, and, and a group of people that wanted to launch a community radio station in Orangeville where the then town council asked if I could provide some support for a community radio station in that area because in fact the then community or commercial radio station decided to move to the south. Uh, sitting in front of 70, 80 people who came to a community organization meeting was the first step of a long journey before the radio station got off the ground. Uh, I see this particular organization, they have their act together. What's most important is now the next step is Jay was very eloquent in identifying the steps that are needed, such as the acquisition of a broadcast engineer to secure a broadcast frequency. The scarcity of which I've been dealing with across this country and even internationally now is like real estate. In certain prime areas, real estate is non-existent. And you have a situation here that has been blessed to you to have a frequency that is available to this group. The organization is certainly months away before uh, supplying and, and providing the CRTC with a full-fledged application or the promise of performance. But it is that promise of performance that will convince the CRTC that this is a group that has its act together. I am certainly wowed by not only the information that David and the group has put together, but more importantly, by seeing you here tonight. This is the first step of many. The next step is going to be the contributions, and more importantly, the support financially from the community itself. And, and this is not a pitch that I think will not be uh, taken lightly, but uh, I think uh, one that will be taken seriously. It is important that you support this endeavor, not only through your contributions, but through word of mouth. Get the community supporting this endeavor because it is not something that can be done without money. Volunteers are going to be the backbone of this particular organization. But it is also the financial needs of this organization that will make it a go. Peter Noche is here with uh, representing the Orangeville Community Radio Station. And uh, uh, I know that Peter's um, uh, colleague, uh, Jim Milton, who's been the station manager for quite some time, was hoping to be here this evening. Uh, my involvement with the community radio station in Orangeville was only roughly about uh, 18 months or so after the station got on the air. And there were many others who took that vision and ran with it for years. This is something that's not short term, but in the eyes of the commission, it has to be long term. So again, the vision is something that's certainly implanted here amongst the community, but it is also you who's going to end up helping that vision last a long time. In my other role, which is that of uh, education at a post-secondary level, uh, I encourage uh, a relationship, as David and I have chatted about this, about the opportunity of not only the uh, mindset or the mandate of community radio is to train, but it's also our role to train future broadcasters, too. And I can see the connection that we will have in any way that can be established. I think that uh, Humber's School of Media Studies broadcasting program will be there. I wish you all the best, and if there's any support that we can provide in any way, we're certainly there. David knows it, Jay knows it, but I do wish you all the best, and I'm looking forward to hearing Aaron radio on the air by about 2006. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to um, welcome Jay back down here to say uh, some closing words. So, Jay.
Actually, well, I think what we'd like to do now, um, we don't want to keep people too far past their bedtimes. Uh, is there any questions from the floor? Anything we can answer? Not only myself, but uh, Joe or Peter Noche, who's involved with the Orangeville radio station. Um, is there any chance of bringing the house lights up a little bit and getting rid of the spotlights, guys? So I can actually see hands going up. So are there any questions? Uh, yeah, right there. Yes, these stations can carry commercial advertising. Uh, there's no restrictions in this kind of a way. Uh, what the past experience of other community radio stations in the country has, been, has found, however, is they don't provide you with a whole lot of money. And they take a lot of work to be able to produce. More to the keeping of community radio stations is the PBS model, where you sponsor individual programs or you have or, uh, money drives, on-air financial pledge drives. Um, the amount of effort that it takes to actually put a 30-second spot together, you don't make enough money, you, you make pennies on those things. So likely you won't hear very many commercials on air in public radio. So question back at the back table? No? Other questions? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Mark and I volunteer uh, some time as first vice president of branch 442 of the Royal Canadian Legion in Erin. Mm -hmm. We're naturally interested in um, any of our community projects that we run, um, getting uh, publicity uh, through the radio medium would be really nice. Um, I guess David Spencer phoned uh, our office earlier today and after listening to the presentation tonight, it may be entirely possible that our executive would donate some funds toward um, establishing the station. But what I need from your organization is for you to write a letter to our executive uh, in written form, and we will certainly consider the request. Okay. It'll be on your desk within seconds, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See, I, not, not to belabor this point, but it's that kind of support that we're going to need over the course of the next six months, eight months, year, two years, in order to be able to make this happen. This is a local radio station. It has local interests. We're going to be using local voices, uh, talking to local people, listening to local musicians to a great extent. And it's organizations such as you're, that you're representing tonight that will be the backbone of the organization. Thank you very much. I'm also a local musician, so I'm interested in <laughs> station. Absolutely. Um, there are quite a number of local groups, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the Aaron Idol is one of them, or Aaron Idol is one of them. Lots of people that we know about, and one of the reasons that we got into doing this pr thing was to actually give kind of exposure, radio exposure to musicians who normally don't get it. You know, and I think that's a very important thing to be able to support local culture. Other questions? Yeah. You said your running costs were 100000 Can you give us a breakdown? I don't need that. <laughs> um, what is your breakdown on 100,000? That's a lot to keep running. How much are administrative costs? How much are performers' costs? Obviously, you don't pay your performers. You're not paying the people who are doing those really nice CDs and whatnot, the programs that we heard. Yeah. So what is your actual breakdown on that 100,000? Yeah. We hope within the next uh, two or three months to actually have documentation that we can hand out and show you. Um, some of the costs that are involved in running a radio station on a yearly basis, you do have to be, if you, if you play music, you do have to pay composer rights, composer fees. It's a, there's a percentage for uh, community radio stations that's different than commercial radio stations, but you still have to set aside uh, um, pro-cam fees and, and those kinds of things. Um, if we're going to uh, operate, I, unless somebody's going to give us an office space to rent some, or for free, we have to pay rent somehow. Um, there will be costs for electricity and power and hydro and operations and phones and those kinds of things. Um, many of the community radio stations that operate currently in Canada that are successful, there's been a number that have not been successful and have not continued, but the ones that tend to be successful tend to have at least one paid administrator, albeit very poorly paid, uh, and may only be part-time and not full-time, but at least somebody to keep the organization together, uh, mo mostly acting as a volunteer coordinator, because that's a huge effort to try and keep uh, a station purely on volunteer help 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, other kinds of things that other stations do that we'll have to, and, I, and again, we don't have that particular thing just ready just yet, but some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, one of the most important, two of the most important programming areas for any radio station, commercial or, or community radio station, is the morning drive period and the afternoon drive period. That's when your audiences tend to peak. 
So if you're going to bring listeners to the radio station, that's where you've got to get your best programming, or at least your most consistent voices. And often radio stations, there's a, there's a current one in the central BC that's very successful, actually. I actually pay somebody for three hours a day in the morning and two hours in the afternoon to be the, the on-air host. So there's costs associated with that. And then just everyday operational costs and those kinds of things. Fundraising in and of itself costs money. Uh, you have to be able to provide the, the brochures and the folders and all of that kind of stuff. The 100,000 figure is one that's um, practically picked out of the air. The fellow that we've talked to who knows more about community radio in this country, a fellow by the name of Barry Ruger, who I mentioned earlier, um, that's his best guess of a radio station, a successful radio station operational budget is around 100,000. There are successful ones that operate on much less, and we may end up being less than that, but I don't think we would be too much more than that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Um, we asked that same question, actually, because uh, when we came up to the possibility that there were no frequencies left, what are the options? And the Internet, of course, is non-regulated. Um, we were dissuaded from that for uh, very quickly, very, very quickly. Uh, one of it is, is that the um, Internet radio stations tend not to get, uh, garner a lot of listeners. It just is not a medium that people are used to dealing with on computers just yet. There are a number of radio stations that have gone that way, particularly smaller community stations that do not have a CRTC license or are, who have one pending and want to get on the air right away, which you can stream audio on that very easily, and we've talked about doing that as an adjunct to the radio station. Uh, but they don't, don't, they don't tend to garner an awful lot of, view, of listeners. Um, the other issue that we're kind of sensitive to is uh, one of the things that Rod Finney talked about. Uh, the birth of this idea came in many ways from uh, the uh, blackout in, in August, where there was no power to be able to tell people that there was water down at the fire hall. Um, if you're on the internet, everybody's computer's dead, so you can't use it as a kind of emergency operational thing. Whereas $2,000 buys you a generator that keep the, keep the, uh, the radio station on the air during a blackout, and everybody can listen in their cars. So there's a way, of, so we're kind of sensitive to that emergency function being a, a play in, in the community. So that's why a couple of the ideas. Um, it's, it's probably a little bit cheaper to go on the internet, but then you, know, you don't have quite the, the kick that you want to be able to do. Other questions? Yeah. How many members do you uh, David, where's David? He's got the current membership list. Uh, it's uh, how many members currently? Uh, but not, not members, just people who are involved in the organization. So about, we've got 45 on the email list. We have two. We have one for the leadership team and one for everyone else who's wants to know what's going on. But we're uh, signing up. The operators are standing by. And we, have we have at least eight memberships already paid today. That's right. So would the, the members who have joined uh, agree to do that? Um, actually, the way that we got the money to hire the initial engineers report was exactly that. Now, we didn't ask for $2,000. But we asked people in the organization to actually come up with the cash, which is what we did. So in a small way, we started that. Um, we have yet, uh, you know, this organization is very new, and we have yet to come up with a, a fundraising campaign that's logical, which is our next step, actually, is actually to, to put something together that actually makes some sense that for the people who donate, gives something back to the community. For the companies that donate, gives back some, uh, some radio time, perhaps you know, because that's what we have available to us. So that's the next step is to actually develop the fundraising. Um, we have a professional fundraiser who's agreed to donate some of her uh, uh, consulting time to us to give us some advice on how to actually create that. Personally, I've, I've done quite a bit of fundraising for the community. I found if you were able to uh, engage 50 people to be on your side and actually be responsible for a dollar amount, you would have a lot more success than one person trying to do everything. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely right. And we recognize that the, f the fundraising consultant said exactly what you just did. And it's, it's, it actually, and it's much, it's actually a more effective way of raising money because you're actually, individuals are actually responsible for the cash and they actually talk to the individuals that they know. So it's a much more personal way to go about it as opposed to a very large fundraising campaign. So yeah. Yes, it is. It will be. It, oh, one of many and we have to ta talk about it, but yes, absolutely. It's a very effective one.
by January 2006. <laughs> okay. I'll be on the phone to you in seconds. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. See, that's the kind of effort and initiative we need. People with ideas from the community to give us some assistance and some help in along those kinds of ways. That's fabulous. Uh, we do that another a dozen times and we'll have the cash. Other questions? Anyone attending the Aaron Fall Fair to raise funds? Uh, we have a booth at the Aaron Fall Fair. Uh, it's mostly an informational booth, and Brett Scott is going to have the full version of the demo CD playing in the background. Uh, we, we as a group will be there to talk up the idea and the concept and to sell memberships initially, and to talk about fundraising, yeah, you bet, absolutely. Um, right now we find that we're in the, in the stage of the organization where we kind of got to get the word out a little bit. Uh, you guys came out, you probably saw, how many came here tonight because of the newspaper articles you saw? Okay, a number of people. Well, it's, that's the beginning of the uh, sort of the informational campaign part of it. Nobody will give money to something they don't know and don't understand. So we want to be able to make sure that everybody in, in the area that our broadcast will affect knows who we are, uh, what, our, what our community membership is, what our base is, and what our goals and, and intentions are. And so that when we do actually come to do the kind of fundraising we're talking about, people know what we are when we knock on the door. So that's what we're doing. But we will be at the fall fair, absolutely. No. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know where's the where's uh, what's the website address? Radio or radio.ca. Radio.ca. Uh, Brett's really right. We, we've been talking about money for the past five or ten minutes. Still, we're a voluntary organization. We need people's uh, efforts and energies to be able to keep the thing running. Uh, money's good, yes. We want money. That's not an issue. But as much or more, I think, we need to have people who are willing to commit some time to doing various things for us, to create various events, to provide some creativity, some, some input, some of those kinds of things. So that's, that's really, and as I said in the earlier presentation, the CRTC is, is really hot on the fact that the community or the organization has to be broad-based community organization that represents all facets of the community and will present a programming plan that will represent that community back to itself. Um, this is not an organization, it's not a project of one or two people who want a radio station and want to play radio. It's just, that's just not on. Um, we feel that it is a broad-based community thing that we need to be able to involve a whole bunch of people in. And so we need your involvement. So money, yes, don't forget money. But at time, and uh, time and attention is more important at this stage. Other questions? Phil. I'll pass on a question that was given to me this morning. Okay. It's a little bit of a triple question. <laughs> How can we call this Aaron Community Radio if it doesn't cover Hillsburg? That, that was reported in the newspaper. Uh, I didn't read that, but we do cover Hillsburg. Uh, the 50, um, what we've proposed, which I didn't mention earlier, is uh, we've proposed a 50 watt transmitter on the Aaron Water Tower. And that transmitter pattern will get to Hillsburg, Cataract, Bell Fountain, um, uh, Balnafad, absolutely. Uh, it will get to uh, Ospringe, uh, Brisbane. And now, the reason I, this is getting into a little bit of our cane detail, so if, if people are not interested, then I won't take offense if you walk away. Um, the CRTC has a rule, and that is if you get a license for a radio station that has under 50 watts of power, if a larger, more commercial organization comes by one day and says, we want your frequency, you have to give it to them. If you have a radio station that has 50 watts or more, you d they can't get it. Once you get the license, it's yours. So we initially went to the uh, engineer with a 50 watt plan. Um, the difference between a 50 watt transmitter, the cost difference between a 50 watt transmitter and a 250 watt transmitter, which would still be okay with the frequency we've got, is mere pennies. Uh, which would automatically mean that we would be able to go to Alton, um, may even hit Grand Valley. We certainly wouldn't want to cross paths with our Orangeville colleagues. But certainly, it, it, all depend, it all depends on which way the, I don't know any of this stuff, I'm not a technical guy, but it all depends on which way you orient the, the tower. So we could get to Cheltenham in theory, you know, a much broader kind of range, but yeah, we get, 
at least within this area. And that's just with a clean signal. You can get much further if you don't mind a little static. And it all depends on what, and the, the main area that the engineer said is, is to be heard on a sort of mediocre radio. If you happen to have a really good radio, you can pick us up 50 miles away. But they have to actually make those decisions based on sort of what is uh, an average standard radio, clock radio next to your bed. Yeah, you do. You have to have the iron ring. Uh, and it has to be the right iron ring. can't just be anyone. We've been talking to, uh, now, th there, there is also, and we were, Joe Andrews and I were talking about this earlier today, um, the CRTC and Industry Canada kind of like engineers that they've dealt with in the past because they trust them. And the guy that we're using has probably been the engineer for the last 35 applications from southern Ontario or around. It's, a, it's a elder engineering out of uh, King City, I think it is. And so this, the industry candidate knows him really well. They know that really well. Um, y any engineer is going to charge you about the same amount of money. Elder was, as soon as we sent him the email and, and the check, uh, the report came like four days later. He was very quick off the mark. Yeah, I, we have not as a, an organization decided he's the guy that we're going to go with with the full report. Uh, personally, I would tend to recommend him because he did such a good job with the first part of this, and he's well known. And and uh, our consultant Barry uh, has recommended him highly. You know, and so there's a lot of really good things there. But you know, this is a community organization, and I don't make decisions on my own. It's got to be a, a sort of a group thing, you know. So, and we really haven't dealt with that as an issue. We are a long way away from getting an engineer's report. A long way away. Maybe not that long, but you know. Maybe in the next year we can actually start talking about that. But that's about six, six to eight thousand dollars, I understand, to get that done. Other questions? Thank you all for coming tonight. I'm very, very pleased with the kind of support and the kind of turnout we had tonight. Uh, please come and say hello to us at the fall fair. Uh, take whatever propaganda we may happen to be offering. Um, and really seriously consider taking out a membership at the front door. Um, we don't know what yet we're, you're going to get for that membership, but we'll invent it pretty quick. <laughs> Trust us. Okay, thank you very much. Set me free.